Hey everybody. Well, we made it to the end of New Jersey. We entered in Cape May and went all the way through staying outside of, you know, not going into the ocean, following everything on the inside. And we're here at the exit. This is called Manasquan. This is where it exit out into the ocean. So basically, I did this in my, in my little boat Sweepy for the simple reason is I wanted to know if I could take my sailboat with the six foot draft or my big trawler with the five foot draft through the New Jersey intro close to watery. And the answer to that is no. Now, you can do parts of the Intracoastal Waterway in New Jersey. If you go out to the ocean and come in in certain areas and go up and down. But if you want to stay inside the entire time and never go out in the ocean, there was parts where it was being dredged. There was plenty of water. Then there's other parts where it was basically two feet. You could go literally from marker to marker, straight on. You're heading right for that marker, not deterring and it would go to two feet. Now sweet pea is fine, it draws a foot of water. I didn't care, I just went over it. And I'm sure if I had a zigzag left and right, I might have found three feet, maybe four, but it's just not possible to go from Cape May all the way to Manasquatch on the inside the entire time. That being said, remember, there are sections that are navigable and there are sections with large boats in there, 50, 60 footers in beautiful marinas. But they come in through the different areas from the ocean into the New Jersey Intracoastal Waterway. Um, so you can do that. So if you wanted to go through the Intracoastal Waterway from south to north or north to south, and you wanted to not do long passages at the sea going out at Norfolk and going all the way up coming out you know at Cape May going out at Cape May going all the way up and hitting New York you could just pop in to the Intracoastal Waterway as you come up there's a lot of entrances with good water clearance and you can go in Atlantic City was a neat place with a beautiful anchorage there there's others along the way so that can be done but as far as little boats my gosh there was a million little boats a little a million runabouts you know Boston Whalers, Roballos, Skipjacks, all those fast fishing boats, shallow draft, one, two feet under on plane, flying by me, 90 miles an hour, just a ton of those boats going by, breakneck speeds, the markers, and most of it's well marked, but like I said, you'll be within the markers and there's no water. But those guys are flying along planing, barely drafting, I don't know, a foot of water, foot and a half, same as Sweet Pea. So they went by me, skimming along, full speed, never had an issue, it was great. So if you had one of those boats, yes, you could absolutely do it, and you could do it fast. There was a lot of nice anchorages. There's a lot of swampy areas. It's mostly reed grass along the shore. There was a few places with some beautiful homes. So a couple, there was a lot of nice marinas, uh, a lot of restaurants. So I actually, if you wanted, if you were to ask my opinion on taking the inside passage all the way up, I'd say absolutely on a small boat. You'll love it. There's lots of protected places. We hit a couple of waves on a couple of spots where it was a little bit rough, but you know, it was only foot and a half waves. Of course, this boat's only 20 feet long. So a foot and a half wave is, you can see here from the water, it rocks it. <laughs> it can handle it. It's designed for it. But so can a barrel going over Niagara Falls. Both of those will handle that trip. They'll both suck. But overall, that being aside, some of the windy days, it was excellent sailing. There were some good days. You could sail parts of it. The only problem with sailing the whole thing on a small boat is you're meandering so much to stay in the canal. Because if you're going to put your keel down and your center, not your keel, if you're going to put your rudder down and your center board down, I always keep on calling the, the center board my keel and I get it all mixed up the rudder. If you're going to flip the rudder down and your center board down, well then you need three feet or four feet of water. There was many a time where I ran aground with my rudder down. I finally got to be so prolific. I just got tired of it. I left the center board up. I kicked the rudder up 
So I'm only drafting about a foot of water, foot and a half with the motor down. The, this boat will steer with the rudder in the up position. I balance the motor to the rudder so it's not being forced. And I put the autopilot on. And I just finally said, forget these markers. And I went from location to location as I wanted to go. There was times I would look over the side of the boat here. And I literally could see the watch the bottom a foot and a half below me going by. But it's just foot and a half the water going by. It was great. I didn't have to watch the markers and I can go straight, set the autopilot and go for an hour or two hours at a time. Absolutely enjoy the ride. So uh, I would do it in that under those conditions. If you guys were a bunch of micro sailors, this would be an absolute blast to do. Uh, shallow draft, you know, with bilge keels, with which like the Enigma boats and a lot of these little dinghy boats so you can kick something up quickly. A lot of camping places along the way, a lot of anchorages along the way, uh, a lot of places to provision. It was wonderful. So that's my take on the Intracoastal Waterway in the New Jersey section. Um, hope you enjoyed this video and something to think about if you decide that you want to bring a big boat through. Other than that, we've made it to the end. We're anchored next to this beautiful island out here. The signs on the island say no dogs allowed. But it's a nice quiet spot. There's some weather coming in. So we're going to sit here for a couple of days before we jump out and make the run to New York. And uh, the last run from here to New York, it's a short run. I think it's 30 miles. So that's just, you can putt-putt the whole way or sail it, you know, motor. Uh, that hurricane is coming up the coast. So we're going to get wet here tomorrow the next day. So I'm going to sit here for a couple of days. We've been going four, you know, four or five days in a row without stopping. And sometimes you want to stop and relax, smell the fish. <laughs> We did catch some fish. There were delicious fish here. And we caught some crabs. Crabs were good too. Um, so yes, it's been a great trip. Uh, and I hope this is informative to some of you guys who are ever curious about that section of the waterway. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.